You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. So the company Boston Dynamics has just released another video with an updated version of their handle robot, this time in the context of logistics. So in previous videos, we've already covered handle. It's a two meter tall robot that weighs 105 kilograms and can carry a 45 kilogram payload all automatically without human intervention. This is thanks to artificial intelligence and its depth perception cameras. The whole robot is battery powered and can run for 24 kilometers on a single charge. I was reading some of the comments on the new video to get a feeling of what the attitude was like on the ground. One comment says, now spill something on the floor and see what happens. Well, Boston Dynamics has already proven themselves when it comes to rapid adjustment hundreds of times a second due to unforeseen circumstances. With artificial intelligence involved, people should now realize that we're in a new generation of robots. This isn't the same technology like ASIMO, where it could fall down by its own fault. According to an interview with Mark Raybert, founder and president of Boston Dynamics, Handle utilizes the engineer's experience with quadruped and biped robots to give it that superior balance and dynamic control seen in other Boston Dynamics robots. Also according to Mark, the reason they decided to use wheels was because of their efficiency and speed on flat surfaces. So with this new version of Handle, the question isn't if these robots will become as efficient for mundane tasks of drudgery, but when? And what's the solution for the people directly put out of work? One solution is a robot tax, where robot owners pay a tax in addition to the cost of getting a robot. In addition, every quarter, the company pays a small amount for the productivity the robot generates. The point of this would be a disincentive to completely automate jobs, but in saying that, the whole thing has to be carried out right. Perhaps the robot tax should go to the government, but it should be in a separate pool from regular wage and corporate taxes. This is to avoid the whole thing being bungled. Perhaps the robot tax revenue should go towards those who have been put out of a job strictly due to automation. It could work something like this. If you've been automated out of a job, you simply apply to make sure that your claim is legitimate, and then you receive part of the revenue created by robots until you can find more work. Though, in order to find more work, you need a strong economy, and that's a whole nother issue. Some governments are already thinking about this. In 2017, South Korea passed the first robot tax, though that was a reduction in tax breaks to companies that invested in robot technologies. So it's clear that policymakers should start looking at this issue. And if done correctly, it might generate enough revenue to actually be a net positive. But that's just my thoughts. What are your thoughts on the issue? And can you think of any ideas for a solution? I'm interested in reading your comments. If you want to see more about cutting edge robots, I have two videos on the topic. One video is on the most advanced robots in regards to dexterity, and the other video is on the most realistic robots. And here is one of them now. So yes, what you're seeing right now is an extremely advanced robot from last year. If you're interested in either of those videos, I'll leave the link below. Anyway, that was something a little different, just a quick video. Thanks for watching. This has been Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.